Our final distinctive is the freeness of God's grace. Here's the way our distinctive reads. We hold fast to free grace, the view that God saves mankind by grace alone, through faith alone, in Jesus Christ alone. No, no works before, during, or after the moment of salvation in Christ contribute anything to the free gift of forgiveness and eternal life that one receives through faith in Jesus Christ. The absence of good works during or after the moment of, of faith subtracts nothing from one's eternal position in God or in Christ However, good works determine whether one will receive eternal rewards. You see, what the Bible says is to the one who does not work but believes. You can't preach a gospel that's believe plus work. Those are two concepts that are antithetical. So we work very hard not to front load the gospel with jargon that, that the Bible doesn't put there. You know, raise a hand, walk an aisle, um, you know, all these, all these kinds of terms that are tossed around in modern day evangelicalism. God only requires one condition to be justified, and that's to believe. Lewis Berry Chafer says that the Bible says this upwards of 150 times. I think the number is actually 160. Go to J.B. Hickson's website, and he'll have every verse that mentions salvation by faith alone, not by works. Genesis 15, 6, then Abraham repented of all of his sins. Whoops, doesn't say that. Then he, Abraham, believed in the Lord and he reckoned it to him as righteousness. You know John three sixteen, Acts 16, 30 and 31, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They said, pray for the gift of faith, doesn't say that. They said, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. 160 times. I mean, it's, this is so clear. How, do we, how, how does anybody that's a faithful Bible reader miss this? Well, they miss it because of the human tendency to want to add a work on the front end. Because if I add a work, I can brag about something. That's why this is a constant battle, this issue of grace. Now, a lot of Christianity would applaud you on this, but notice what our statement says here. No works before, during, or after the moment of initial faith in Christ contribute anything to the free gift of forgiveness. It goes on and it says the absence of good works during or after the moment of faith subtracts nothing. So <clears throat> what, what we believe is that good works post-salvation are very important but they don't contribute anything to your justification. Those contribute to eternal rewards and other things of that nature, but they contribute nothing to one's justification. And we hold to a model of sanctification which teaches the three phases of salvation. Justification, sanctification, and glorification. Justification, the past tense of salvation, I have been saved. Sanctification, the present tense of salvation, I am being saved. Glorification, future tense of salvation, I will be saved. Saved from what? Justification, saved from sin's penalty. Sanctification, this is more of a process, gradually being delivered from sin's power. Glorification, saved from the very presence of sin. And those are three separate phases. Total, they're totally independent works. So the moment you trust Christ, which is birth, now God says it's time to grow. And just like in the natural world, you see people that are maturing and some aren't. But they're still both here, aren't they? They're both born. And so we believe in this model uh, of the spiritual life that sanctification is, is not automatic. You have to be in an environment where you're being taught correctly and you have to appropriate the resources that God has given us moment by moment to be conformed into the image of his son in daily life. 
three separate phases completely. Most schools will not do this. They will, they will link at least the first two. Hey, if, if something's not happening to our satisfaction in that middle, middle column, then maybe you aren't justified. Well, you just, mi you just mix two things that are separate as far as God is concerned. And we believe that we achieve Christ's likeness in this life, not sinless perfection, the same way we were justified. I mean, how in the world were we justified? We were justified by faith alone through the power of the Holy Spirit. Well, how do we grow in Christ? Same reality. Faith alone by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is Paul's critique in the book of Galatians to the Galatians who were stumbling in the middle tense of their salvation. He says to them, are you so foolish having begun by the Spirit, justification, are you now being perfected by the flesh? They, they had lost sight of the principle of grace, that it's grace that saves, justifies, it's grace that helps us to grow. But God is not going to force me to grow independent of volition because I can make choices constantly that quench the spirit, grieve the spirit, etc. Volition is required to be justified. You have to believe. Volition is required to grow. It's just there's more commands to understand and more resources to learn. Anyway, that's our, our model of sanctification. So I hope this, uh, you found this a little bit helpful. It's explaining what, why we're here. These are our distinctives. Scripture's original languages, a commitment to the consistent literal method of interpretation, a commitment to dispensational theology, a commitment to the full counsel of God's word, a commitment to the sufficiency of the scripture, a commitment to allowing the scripture to inform a comprehensive worldview, and we stand on the freeness of God's grace. So who's going to teach your church and your children? Are they going to have this right understanding or not? As you wrestle with that question, now, you, now we see the need for Chafer Seminary. Amen? All right, I'm done talking.